Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and this is the summary for the day of 699 for the 23rd of <clears throat> January. <clears throat> and uh, let's start off with the frontline changes. There's three frontline changes uh, over the past 24 hours and they are all Ukrainian uh, or in favor of the Ukrainians. So let's start off with the first one is over at Yampolivka. Uh, so this is at the Crimea front. So this is Crimea and uh, this is the Yampolivka is over here and uh, the frontline change is over act actually uh, just on the eastern part of Yampolivka uh, over this area here. So what happened is that uh, in the video footage uh, of this area here, uh, the Ukrainian uh, and the Russian forces uh, went into battle uh, and uh, there's some Russian attack coming in this direction and the Ukrainian tank basically uh, come in and fired upon at the Rus uh, Russian troops and then they redrew. So, uh, so that is uh, that is actually helpful for us in terms of the establishing the front line, and uh, we, which means that the Ukrainians actually have at least uh, this area here, at least this area here. I'm not sure about the rest of the tree line, but you know, it does show that the Russian may have a uh, firm control over this area here. But we're not exactly sure because the attack could come from actually this direction. So that's why there's no change in terms of the gray zone in this area here. But uh, there is definitely a firm control of the Ukrainians actually at this uh this tree line around here uh not sure why my 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 this thing disappeared uh i will i will fix it later after the zip wrap so um and then the next front line uh is over front line change is over over at uh the adfk front uh in the southeast of novo but so this is adfk city and uh, over in the northern part of this front line uh there is geolocation location of ukrainian forces uh, over at this tree line around here so this actually shows that the ukrainian forces actually have recaptured part of this area here that the russians previously have captured uh so yeah so the ukrainians are actively doing counter attack clearly shown with this geolocation location and uh and uh, the Russian attack towards uh, Novo Babutivka and uh, Ocheritani, uh, these two towns, uh, this this direction, is not working out. Uh, so far, the Ukrainians are doing pretty good job uh, in uh, holding back the Russian assault. And uh, the last frontline change is over at Klishevka. So, uh, so this Klishevka region, this is the Klishevka, and uh, you can see that uh, the the front line previously that we have is around here. So this. Uh, this is the front line that we have and uh, the Ukrainian forces is geolocated now in this tree line. They are attacked by a drone, if I not remember wrong. Yes, they are attacked by a drone, which means that the, this entire tree line around here is probably under Ukrainian control. And uh, and which means that this entire claim uh, that the Russians have uh, pushed forward to is now invalidated. They are definitely nowhere close to that. They are probably, uh, probably uh, around here at most currently the russian uh territory and uh this this uh this battle uh in this area is very very uh, important uh, strategically because let's go to the google maps and uh so this is klesievka and uh the front line is actually here that we are talking about and if you look from the ground up uh from klesievka you can see that this is actually a high ground so this is actually uh, strategically very important which is why a lot of the battles are fighting are being fought in this uh, northern part of Klishevka <clears throat> and if you look closely uh, to this updated satellite mapping uh, you can I'm not even sure it's updated I don't think it's updated this is the old map uh, old satellite image this is uh, this fortification is built pre-war and you can see the fortification in this northern part there's all these zigzag uh, zigzag uh, entrenchment in this area here and uh, this is a show of this how strong uh how important this position is to the ukrainians at that they built this entrenchment and now uh, with this frontline change we are looking at uh the ukrainians probably uh taking part of it i'm not sure if it's all of it maybe half of it and the russians are on the other side they they probably took half of this entrenchment so uh there's definitely some kind of a gray zone uh in the center uh some kind, of, some kind of no man's land so the this battle uh, is still ongoing we shall continue to monitor and see if the russians uh, uh actually can recapture the whole thing or the ukrainians will capture the entire area and deny the russians uh, a strategically important uh, spot and uh negate all the progress that they have made uh, over the past two months so uh so these are the frontline changes uh going to the weather 
uh, the U Ukraine is still in uh, negative territory uh, in Celsius, uh, minus in minus territory over in the eastern part of Ukraine. Uh, on the east, uh, in the western part is still a bit warmer, but that's not where the war zone are. Uh, uh, there is some wind. Uh, there's no there's not much what there's not much rain. Uh, you can see that everything is zero. So not sure if you studied science before. Uh, zero means uh, there's no rainfall. Okay, so, so there's no rainfall in the eastern part. So we are not expecting any snow, which means that uh, the weather is cold, but uh, it's fighting condition uh, because there's not much cloud as well. If you look at the, cl the heavy clouding, the heavy clouds and uh, storm storms, uh, situation is actually pretty much far away from uh, eastern Ukraine. So we go into the strategic and tactical, uh, tactical report. Uh, so over at the Kharkiv front, uh, the most significant is actually some rumors uh, being uh, posted by Military Chronicles, uh, which is actually, I, I saw this on Military Summaries uh, Telegram channel. And uh, so the because I have Military Chronicles, uh, I've already dropped it from a secondary source as well. So I don't really follow their Telegram channel. But what happened is that uh, there is this claim or rumors of the Russian forces actually capturing Platonivka. So there is this rumor that the Russians have attacked and capture this area here as a foothold to further uh, expand their security zone around the Kharkiv, Kharkiv, uh, I think Bryansk, is it Bry No, not Bryansk, but, oh, sorry, uh, Belorod uh, region. So uh, so this, this, this rumor uh, is not verified yet, which is why there's no mapping change because I uh, usually, I do not map things uh, outside of my primary or secondary sources. So this is a uh, this is just a rumor right now. So according to military uh uh to to sorry to military chronicles, they say that um, Petnevka in the Vochans region uh, may have been captured, and uh and then uh, this information is not confirmed uh in order to create a possible buffer zone uh, in the south of Belgorod region. So we shall wait and see if this turns out to be something, uh and uh. And this is something that I did alluded to with all these bombardments uh, that is still located over in the Khaki front. Um, and we are see, seeing, it, seeing it more over this area here uh, in today's report. We, we have uh, Konstantinivka getting bom uh, bombarded by artillery system uh, just south of Udi, pr the previous strong point of, uh, you, uh, of the Russian uh, position when the Khaki front is still uh, active. And uh, there is also a few in the Sumi region. So uh, the Russians are... Uh, Attacking uh, Ukrainian positions of Velika Pasarivka, and uh, this and another one over at the uh, Ponomarenki. So basically, uh, just neighboring town, and uh, there is this attacks in these two areas here. The these are artillery strikes. I'm I'm not sure what is the plan right now because we are seeing so much of this geolocation of the shelling over in this uh, border region. It could be a case where the Russians are actually just uh. Are softening the Ukrainian defense, or they are trying to distract the Ukrainians into believing that the Russians is going to do some major push. And the fact that they are shelling uh, in various positions, like previously they are shelling over in the Voschans region, and this time around we are seeing it over near Udi and now at uh, Sumi region, uh, there is various positions uh, that the Russians may be threatening to invade. Uh, so uh, let me push the map a bit to this area here. Okay, so yeah, so like this. So the the Russians are uh, could be attacking through uh Voschans region and are spreading down the Savinsky Donetsk River and hitting the rear of the Oskil River. It could be also that they are going through uh Kozacha Lopan again and uh, on Alexandrivka and then they push all the way to the Hachi, which is where they previously did during the uh the beginning of this war. Or they could also go through a uh, Velika Pasarivka and uh this this is also possible because it's hitting into uh the Sumi region, they can also hit to the rear and also, or they can do all three at the same time and then do an encirclement of Kharkiv uh, city, which is basically uh, what happened over in the beginning of the war. So we shall wait and see how this progress uh, because uh, this is going to be a very uh, big if, the, if this actually happened. Uh, I can't imagine the Russians doing this right now yet, uh, but if they do, then yeah, then I got more things to report. So we move on into the Kupians front. So uh, this is Kupian city, and uh, this is the Kupians front. And uh, the so the 
Kupian's front uh, have went a lot quieter right now. It could be because uh, the Ukrainians are doing a good job uh, defending this position. Fighting is still reported in uh, Sinkivka with both defense ministry claiming that they are defending. Whereas the Ukrainians are counterattacking over at Tabaivka. The Russian attack uh, in, in this area here, we can zoom in. Uh, so in the Kromalne region, uh, the Russians previously have captured this area and they are pushing north of Kotelirivka. And uh, they hold a position at Kromalne and pushing towards Berestove. These advance have currently not been reported over the past 24 hours. But we do have the Ukrainians being reported to be attacking at Tabaivka, reported by the Russian Defense Ministry. So if you if this is accurate which means that uh which actually corroborates with what happened over the past two two three days that the russians are currently holding a position uh just off the Baivka and the ukrainians are attacking to try to cut away this uh this push from the russians so far uh there is no much news the fact that the russians reported about it may may show that the def the the defense has succeeded against the ukrainian assault because uh both defense ministry don't like to report about failures so we shall uh, wait and see how this progress we move down uh, over the Sviatovay front uh, there is only one uh, report over at Makievka. so at Makievka, the ukrainian forces also counter attack according to the russian defense ministry uh, so they are attacking in this direction previously the russians have been reportedly attacking Makievka for some time uh, we have reported reports on the 22nd of january and then previously it was 16 and 17. This time around, the Ukrainians counter attack. And uh, this was this is the first Ukrainian attack in Makievka in three months. So uh, it has been some time since the Ukrainians have attacked in this area here. We shall wait and see how this progress. Over at the Kremina front, this is Kremina, and uh, this is Kremina front. At the Kremina front, the Russians uh, are still conducting offensive, and this time around, they overtook the Ukrainian initiative, which was what happened in the previous sip rep. Uh, the Russians are attacking over at Yampolivka, Toske, uh, Serebransky Forestry, and towards Krykorivka within the Serebransky Forestry. Ukrainians counterattack over at Yampolivka, uh, Yampolivka and Dibrova. Mm, this one don't have? Oh, yeah. So I thought Toske there is something. So, yeah. So uh, you can see that the Russians are a bit more active in this region here. And we have geolocation of uh, the front line change at Yampolivka showing that the Russians indeed have attacked in that red area. So, uh, and maybe the tank attack, the tank counter attack could be what the Russians are reporting, the U the, Rus the Ukrainian tanks counter attack. And the thus we have this conflict of reports from both sides saying that they are both attacking or defending. So, uh, very, very bizarre. And uh, another Joe location is uh, over at Oh, so there, there is also a, there's another one. The Ukrainians are also counterattacking over at the Serebransky Forestry. Uh, the icon is actually being covered, so I, I move this here. So um, and uh, there is another geolocation of Russian forces over in the eastern part of Terni, and uh, the Russians are actually pushing in this direction, and then they got hit by the Ukrainians. So uh, this, this means that uh, the the Russian attack at Terni was indeed uh very active you can see that 13 to 20 second the russians were attacking the past 24 hours it was not reported so not reported doesn't mean it didn't happen i just want to highlight uh whatever you we are seeing on the situation report the sit rep uh it's just intel or information that we can get uh it doesn't mean that uh if i didn't report it something is not happening so uh this is important to note in intelligence um in intel in intel work basically you get information and you report on the information that you get it it doesn't mean that there's the entire truth so uh yeah so just like watching a reading newspaper the newspaper didn't talk about your you know, about you, you know eating your breakfast and going to bathe and going to work doesn't mean that you didn't go to bathe didn't eat and go to work you know uh yeah a, a kind of very weird uh, analogy so uh over at uh steven's front <laughs> At the Sivas run, uh, the Sivas is getting bombarded by Russian artillery, uh, and the uh, Russians are attacking over at Bilohorivka. This is a continuation of what they have been going on for some time now. But the rest of the front line actually went quiet. There's nothing over than the rest of the front line. Uh, there is some rumors coming from uh, Myro Shinikov, which is no longer a primary source. They are now secondary source, uh, which is why I don't map his information. He's he is claiming that the Russians are pushing closer and closer towards Vimka. And uh, but he also said that the hills, the high grounds, are behind their soldiers, which also means that the front line did not change. <laughs> uh, if we, because we, if you remember, the front line changes report. Uh, 
that I've covered uh, after the Russians captured uh, Vesely. Uh, this area here is all high ground. These are all hills. So the Ukrainian forces definitely have a defensive position around these hills. And if the Ukrainians are having the high ground behind them, the hills, that means the front line did not change. So uh, this is a bit confusing. So no, uh, reading uh, Myra Shinikov reports uh, can be you know, very disorientating uh, because sometimes I, it, 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 it sounds a lot and nothing at the same time. So over at the Bakhmut front, this is Bakhmut city. At the Bakhmut front uh, in the northern flank, uh, the Russian forces are attacking towards Krykhorivka, Bodanivka, and uh, towards Ivanivsky. Uh, and there is Joe location of uh, Lancet attacks. Oh, sorry, drone attacks against, I think there's a Lancet, uh, against our Ukrainian artillery in the rear, uh, uh, in the Kalinina. So uh, this, this is, uh, this situation here remains largely the same. But what is significant was, I forgot to report in the last subreddit because I was very distracted in the la when I was recording, uh, because I keep answering calls and uh, doing some other work. Uh, the, the Russian forces is reportedly inside uh, of Bodanivka and they allegedly have captured the center or at least they are at the center of Bodanivka itself. I can't verify this uh, so which is why I only put a popo you uh, know this this little spike here to represent that. Uh, this doesn't mean that um, it is true right now because there is no uh, clear uh, verification of this is the case there is also no mapping to show this is the case so which is why uh, it is what it is right now we will wait and see and uh, over in the southern flank of the Bakhmut front the Russian forces continue the same thing with fighting reported at Klishevka at Andreevka as well as at Kudyomivka so uh, this is pretty much the same thing uh, the strategic situation did not change the front line also did not change except the Ukrainians have seemed to capture more of the uh, northern part of Klishevka somehow so it and most likely what happened is that the Russian attack, they captured certain grounds and then it was reported by the, the Russian uh, open source intelligence and uh, telegram channels. So uh, they reported the, the advance, you know, the Russians are there. But those positions may not be very good uh, defensive positions or they do not want to risk their soldiers dying uh, in such a forward front line. So they redrew the troops and... Um, and it was not reported that the troops are redraw redrawn and the Ukrainians retook the position and uh, this this Russian attack redraw from the place that they captured is very common uh, in the Russian uh, situation where the Russians often attack kept uh, taking ground and then they relinquish the ground uh, because they are just not prepared to defend those grounds and this happens a lot so so, uh, that, but it's not saying that uh, no credits go to the Ukrainian forces because the Ukrainian forces still went on to retake the position and uh, it is uh, a lot of bravery to sit in that position where it was previously captured by the Russians just, you know, hours before that. So, you know, yeah. So, that's that. You no, know, don't, don't dismiss the, the, the courage and uh, the sacrifice of the soldiers on both sides. So, despite no matter, no matter which side you are taking, you know, th these are all fathers, sons and brothers. So, um, we move on to over in the... Uh, there's nothing over in the New York front. Uh, the entire Ukrainian attack in the Sumi and uh, Pishinivka region suddenly disappeared. So, uh, there's nothing there. Over at this uh, Adyevka front, uh, at the Adyevka front, the Russian forces are reportedly attacking at uh, Novo Bakhmutivka, Stepove. Over in Adyevka itself, Pervomaiske and the Uh This time around, we do not have a lot of intel about uh, what is ha currently happening inside of Adyevka. Uh, uh, the Ukrainians are counter-attacking over in the southern part of Adyevka. So this is the only one with some details. Uh, Raiba reported that the the Russians are holding the southern part of this uh, of Adyevka and the Ukrainians are currently actively trying to counter-attack. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this uh, Adyevka is a very difficult, uh, the, the southern part is really difficult for the Ukrainians. You can see the, it is, the, this entire area that the Russians captured is a high ground and the Ukrainians will have to fight up uphill. So, you know, this is actually not, not uh, easy for the Ukrainian forces and uh, the Russians currently uh, holding the lines. There is some rumors talking about the Russians losing a lot of equipment, uh, particularly Deep State UA talked about it. But, you know, 
the Russia, the Soviet Union uh, also lost lost a lot of equipment against the Nazi Germans, and they still won the war. So, uh, losing equipment, losing men doesn't mean anything until you run out of it. So basically, the same thing goes for the Ukrainians. Uh, so you know, the Russian side always talk about Ukrainians losing a lot of equipment and men manpower and whatnot. Yeah, it could it could be true, but that doesn't mean that Ukraine will lose the will lose just because of that. They have to run out of it. Then uh, that's the problem. Uh, and the the real fact is that numbers in equipments and manpower are operational secret. Uh, these are all top secret information on both sides. So there is uh, these are military intelligence uh, at the top secret level. You nobody knows the real numbers. So you don't expect anyone, any YouTubers, any experts to tell you the numbers. Those are all made up. You no, know, they don't know. They are just making up. They are just aggregating. They are just uh, uh, guessing. And I really don't want to guess, so which is why I always tell you, no, I don't know. So uh, we move on into the Donetsk front. So this is the Donetsk front, and uh, this is Donetsk city, uh, the capital of the Donetsk People's Republic or the Donetsk Oblast, if you are pro-Ukraine. And uh, the the Russians are still fighting in the uh, in this region here. Fight. The, there's no more reports about fighting at Krasnohorivka over here. Uh, what we do have is the fighting over at Georgivka as well as Novomihailivka. So uh, the fighting here has, uh, at least at Novomihailivka, seems to have uh, died down quite a bit. There's no more active assault from the Russian side. So maybe for now, they are regrouping and trying to think what to do because the Ukrainians have put up a very, very strong defense around this area here. At Georgivka, there is a geo location of Ukrainian forces uh, right at the edge of where our, we, right, we we put the front line uh, of Ukrainian forces getting hit by an FPV drone. So I have not changed the front line for this yet. We shall we shall wait and see how this goes because if not, then the Ukrainians may have also taken a bit more grounds in this area here after the Russians did not send troops to hold that position. And th this is a very uh, common situation. This is something that I already mentioned just now about the Russian pushing forward, taking ground and then redrawing. And uh, so, and this is very, very common in the Battle of Marinka, which is just over here. In the Battle of Marinka, there's always news about Russians pushing uh, very far ahead, ahead. And then after that, we realize that the front line did not change. So, uh, so that's the situation around uh, this uh, area here. And uh, there's nothing else over the rest in the rest of the Donetsk front, we move into the Zaporizhia front. So this is Zaporizhia city and uh, this is the Zaporizhia front. And uh, at the Velika Novosilka sector, we have the repeat of the, this uh, sector, this Velika Novosilka. And uh, we have the repeat of the Russian uh, attack uh, over at Staro Mayoske and uh, Prione. I'm not sure, this report feels like it's the same report because uh, the initial report is from the uh, the SIPREP. The daily report from the Russian Defense Ministry. This report is actually the uh, front line, the, the the troops, the group, the grouping of troops own report in this area here, and it could be actually the same thing. So, uh, so don't take this uh, very hard. Uh, I don't think you would because nobody cares really. Uh, we are just. I know you're just watching this like a football match, but no, yeah, don't take this very seriously for now. Uh, we move on over the Huyapole sector. Uh, the Russians did another probe again at Chevone. So is this Chevone? And uh, the, the previous the previous attack at Chevone was in the fourteenth. Previously, it was on the eighth, and then on the tenth of December. So it ten of and then so it is a very sporadic place uh, where the Russians attack. So I believe this is yet another probing attack. Uh, unless they going to continue to uh to press on and uh, make this. A sustained offensive operation in this area here, or assault operation in this area, which is similar to the situation right up now at uh, Nesterianka. So Nesterianka is starting to look like a real uh, offensive operation or assault operation for the Russians uh, over at the Orekhiv sector. So this is Nesterianka, and uh, we have reports of fighting from the 20th, 20th to 21st. We didn't have any reports about the fighting on the 22nd, but on the 23rd, the Russian Defense Ministry continued to say that they are attacking in the Nesterianka region. And I wonder if this could be the beginning of a new direction of attack. We do have reports previously from Raiba about the Russians attacking down the highway towards the Mala Tomashka. Uh, so if this is the case, then we might see a, a bigger pincer currently happening, uh, currently happen, uh, planned or in the beginning stage of the outer pincer, while there was an inner pincer over from Verbove and Robotine. So this could, could be happening. I can't be sure, 
but no we sh we need to wait and see because war don't happen you know it's not like computer games you know it's not like a few hours is settled a uh, uh, offensive can take over months at least weeks so you know at minimum it's going to be days so the this is going to take some time to develop but uh, this could be something that is currently happening and as for these lower arrows uh you probably would know by now what is happening the russians are still continue to put pressure on robotine from the west and also attacking the western part of verbovay so uh we shall continue to monitor and see how this progress uh this front line never changes despite there's always report from the ukrainian defense ministry that the russians are attacking and uh so somehow the front line never changes so so it could be uh the case where the 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 russians are just doing positional battle uh which is what i'm i have been allu alluding to for the past few sit reps already so this is just to draw more ukrainian troops into this area because once you take out certain ukrainian forces they will have to replace them with reinforcement to continue to hold the position and uh and it's going to take a long time because in modern warfare uh a trench line is no longer held by a few hundred troops it's not even a company of troops it's usually a squad of troops only like seven to ten people at most and uh so the if you kill 10 you have to replace with 10 it's going to take a long time so so we move on to, away from the Orikiv sector we move into the uh, Kayamske sector so this is the Kayamske sector this is Kayamske uh, the Russians attack Petikaki so uh, this is very very interesting uh, because we have fighting at Zerbianki on the 13th to 8th and the 18th at Petikaki we have uh, 14, 17, 21 to 23 so uh, the Russians are also making a sustained push over at Piatikaki region we're not sure where the vector of attack come from um so this is very very interesting and we previously did have the Russians attacking Kayamske itself so the uh these are all very diversionary in my opinion it feels it, they have a diversionary feel to me so uh if there is a diversion so let's see let's zoom out a bit we have a diversion over at Piatikaki or Kayamske we have a diversion over at Nestilianka uh, and then uh, we have at Mara Tomashka, and then we have at Chevroni at, at uh, Staromayoski, Prione region. So it comes here and there, here and there, here and there. So the, this is something that is currently happening over at the Zaporizhia front. And uh, so we move on from the Zaporizhia front to the Kherson front. So this is the Kherson front, this is Kherson city. And the Kherson front, the Ukrainian forces is still at Krinky. There is no sign of the Russians retaking Krinky just yet. The Russians are reportedly still attacking according to the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. And uh, but we do have no more other, no more other details. Uh further up north we have the Lancers continue to wreak havoc. There is uh there is an airstrike on um uh in the north of Odradol Kayamka. Uh over this position, there is some uh, Russian airstrike. And uh further up north, uh over at uh, this position called Livisky Otrobi or north of Visoke. Uh, there is a uh, self-propelled artillery getting uh, destroyed by lancers again uh this this is super far actually uh from Krinky, this is around 20 20 over kilometers so this is actually either at the, at the age of the capability of the of the artillery system or they're actually out of range of Krinky. and uh so it could be a case where the the artillery is not actually operating they are actually hiding in the rear and the russian drones still fly all the way there and Deliver, deliver a strike and uh, this this just shows how difficult it is for the ukrainians to to support their frontline troops because getting anywhere near even at excess of 20 kilometers you still can be a target so you know this is actually very very uh disturbing i would say for the ukrainian forces so anyway this is the summary for the day of uh, 699 for the 23rd of january do press the like button subscribe i'll see you guys in the next update